In the last class, we are discussing about the ponds. Uh, let us try to understand some of the regions of the ponds. The ponds are supplied by the pontine branches of basilar artery. If it is involved in the ventromedial part, involvement of ventromedial part of the pons will lead to a syndrome known as Raymond's syndrome. And the features, important features of this syndrome will be contralateral hemiplegia, hemiplegia of the opposite side. And this will be of upper motor neuron type. This is due to involvement of corticospinal tract. The other important feature will be medial squint. And this is due to uh, involvement of the sixth nerve. And there will be paralysis of the lateral rectus muscle of the eyeball leading to medial squint. Therefore, the important features of Raymond syndrome are contralateral hemiplegia, upper motor neuron in type, and medial uh, squint due to involvement of uh, sex now leading to paralysis of lateral rectus muscle of the eyeball. <coughs> the second syndrome known as the millard gobler syndrome. The millard gobler syndrome, there is uh, 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 damage of the pons a bit dorsolateral to the median plane. In that, there will be involvement of the pyramidal tract leading to contralateral hemiplegia, upper motor neuron type. And there will be involvement of the seventh nerve nucleus. Sixth nerve is spare. Seventh nerve nucleus, this will cause paralysis of same side of the face. And this is lower motor neuron type. Third type, more dorsally, leading to involvement of the sixth nerve nucleus and seventh nerve nucleus. The condition is known as Foveli syndrome and this leads to medial squint due to the uh, involvement of sixth nerve nucleus and paralysis of the lateral rectus muscle of the eyeball. Medial squint and paralysis of same side of the face due to the involvement of motor nucleus of the seventh cranial nerve. This will be of lower motor neuron type. Now, at times, a tumor appears at the cerebellopontine junction and leading to some uh, symptoms. This is known as cerebellopontine syndrome. And this uh, causes involvement of 7th and 8th cranial nerve and compression of cerebellum. Due to the involvement of 8th cranial nerve, there will be ringing sensation in the ear or there may be loss of hearing. Due to the compression of the cerebellum by the tumor, there uh, will be ataxia and trait. And due to the involvement of 7th cranial nerve, there will be paralysis of the face, loss of taste sensation from anterior to third of the tongue, and hyperacusis. Hyperacusis is due to paralysis of stapletus. These are some of the regions related to Coming to midbrain. Midbrain is the uppermost part of the 
brace stem, this uh, lies in tentorial notch. This is the smallest part of the brain stem. When we see the midbrain, this has a ventral surface and a dorsal surface and the cavity of the midbrain is known as the cerebral aqueduct. Cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of Sylvius. Cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of Sylvius. And this uh, cavity connects it third ventricle and fourth ventricle. Third and fourth ventricles are connected by right? third ventricle and fourth ventricle. They are connected by cerebral aqueduct. Fourth ventricle is the cavity of hindbrain and third ventricle is the cavity of diencephalon. These two are connected by cerebral aqueduct. The cerebral aqueduct divides the midbrain mid into two parts. Dorsal to it lines the tectum. Tectum. Tectum dorsal. Dorsal part. And eventually cerebral pedantal. Ventral. Dorsal to the aqueduct there is tectum and ventral to it is the cerebral pedant. The tectum com comprises of four rounded elevations known as colliculi. Superior colliculi superior colliculi a pair a pair of superior colliculi and a pair of inferior colliculi a pair of superior colliculi and a pair of inferior colliculi four elevations are there and they are separated uh, from each other by uh, a cruciform sulcus and the four elevations collectively are known as corpora quadrigemina. Corpora quadrigemina. Just below the inferior colliculus, we get the Superior cerebellar peduncles. Just below the inferior corniculus, there is a superior cerebellar peduncle. The medial margin of superior cerebellar peduncle are connected by a sheet of uh, gray matter, which is known as superior cerebellar peduncle, and this is pierced by fourth cranial nerve. The fourth cranial nerve is the only cranial nerve emerging on the dorsal surface of the brain stem. <coughs> the inferior colliculus. The inferior colliculus is a compact mass of gray matter. Inferior colliculus is a compact mass of grey matter covered by white matter. And this comes in uh, uh, auditory pathway and auditory reflex pathway. The inferior colliculus receives fibers from the 
lateral laminiscus lateral laminiscus and this gives out fibers to superior follicular superior follicular inferior follicular of the inferior follicular of the opposite side opposite side and then it also gets out i fibers to the medial jediculate body medial jediculate body the inferior particles comes in the pathway of hearing known as the auditory pathway auditory pathway auditory pathway this is for hearing and auditory reflex pathway auditory reflex pathway we know much about the auditory pathway let us try to trace the pathway the receptors are present in hair cells of organ of body hair cells hair cells of organ of body hair cells of organ of body these are the receptors the peripheral processes of the uh, sensory ganglia they go to the hair cells and their central process they form the cochlear nerve cochlear nerve cochlear nerve and as we know cochlear nerve is attached to the brain stem at pronto medullary junction like most naturally the cochlear nerve enters into the bone and it goes to ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei now the fibers from the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei they emerge as acoustic stria and they form a bundle known as trapezoid body trapezoid body and we also know that uh, in the trapezoid body uh, some uh, gray masses are there known as nuclei of trapezoid body so the fibers they terminate in the nuclei and fresh uh, fibers start from the nuclei nucleus of trapezoid body nucleus of trapezoid body the fibers of the trapezoid body they cross the median plane and form a bundle known as a lateral laminiscus these fibers they form lateral laminiscus 
lateral leg discus contains both crossed and uncrossed fibers. The lateral leg discus it terminates in inferior polyphenols. Inferior polyphenols. Inferior polyphenols. The fibers starting from the inferior polyphenols they go to medial geniculate body. Medial geniculate body. Medial geniculate body and this uh, traverses through inferior brachium. Inferior brachium. And from the medial uh, geniculate body, the fibers of auditory radiation start and they end in auditory area of the cerebrum. The trap which starts from the medial geniculate body is known as auditory radiation. Reflex pathway, auditory reflex. Auditory reflex. Auditory reflex is turning off eyes and head in response to uh, stimulation of the cochlear nerve or towards the source of thumb, there is turning of head and the eyes. This is known as auditory reflex. And the pathway, this, also, this again starts from the hair cells of organ of corti. Then through the spiral ganglia, this goes to the cochlear down, ventral and dorsal cochlear nucleus, then to the trapezoid body, then through lateral luminescence, this goes to inferior quadriculus. From this point, the pathway changes. That from the inferior quadriculus, the fibers, they go to superior quadriculus. From this point, the pathway changes. From inferior quadriculus, it goes to superior 
superior polyculars. And from superior polyculars, two tracks start. Two tracks. One is Tecto Bulbar. Tecto Bulbar track. And the other one is known as Tecto Spinal. Tecto Bulbar tract and Tecto Spinal tract. Tecto Bulbar tract this terminates in third fourth and sixth nerve nuclei. Third, fourth and sixth nerve nuclei. The third, fourth and sixth nerve nuclei they supply the extraocular muscles of the eyeball. In this way, this helps in uh, turning of the eyeballs. The tectospinal tract, this goes to spinal accessory nucleus, spinal accessory nucleus, number one, and number two, this will go to the ventral Gray column, ventral gray column of cervical spinal cord. The spinal accessory nucleus, we know that it supplies the uh, sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle. And ventral gray column of the cervical spinal cord, this supplies the muscles of the neck. In this way, they help in uh, turning of the head. And tectobulbar tract, this helps in movement of the eye pod. In this way, the auditory reflex pathway starts from the hair cells of the organ of cortic. The receptors are there, and through this part, it uh, goes up to the inferior corticular and from inferior corticular the pathway changes. The fibers they go to superior corticular and from uh, superior corticular two tracks start, tectobulbar tract and tectospinal tract. Tectobulbar tract they give up fibers to third, fourth and sixth cranial nerve nuclei and tectospinal tract they give some fibers to spinal accessory nuclei and ventral gray column of the cervical spinal cord. These are meant for the movement of the head by the contraction of neck muscle and thus for the movement of the eye body.